Hey guys, Logan here from Popular Woodworking. In the shop, a router is a commonly used tool and they're ones that I've come to really appreciate. So in this video, I wanna talk about the different sizes of routers and how you might use each one in your shop and why I think having a couple different sizes of routers is valuable. So in my shop, one of my most commonly used routers is this guy. It's gonna be a smaller palm router. Uh, sometimes they're called trim routers or laminate routers. They're really a smaller size. Most of the time these are gonna be like a one horse to maybe one and a quarter horse motor on them. And the one thing I really like about these routers is as the name describes, palm router, they really fit in your palm. Now this doesn't mean that you necessarily wanna use it with one hand, uh, but it is of a size that it's pretty close to being a one-handed router. So I like using these for a lot of my routing tasks, whether I am trimming up edging, uh, maybe even cutting mortises, stuff like that. Cuts that don't really require a ton of power to get through them. The next size is one that most people I think are probably more familiar with. And that's gonna be this. This is what I'm gonna call the standard size router. A lot of the times these router motors are in the one and three quarters to let's call it two and a half horse range. This is kind of the standard size that's been made for the last 40 or 50 years. And these come in a variety of different base styles. Most of the time, these are available in either a fixed base uh, or a plunge base like this. And the plunge base allows you to move the motor up and down as the bit's running. And these are super common for most woodworking tasks that we do. Uh, cutting profiles on the edge of panels, making mortises and stuff like that. And I really like them. Um, I usually keep two of these guys in my shop. Uh, one probably loaded up with a flush trim bit like you see here. Um, and then another one that I kind of swap bits back and forth on. Same thing with these guys. A lot of times I will have uh, a chamfer bit set up in one of these palm routers. Uh, and if I have a second one on hand, a lot of times I'll just keep a little flush trim bit in here. Uh, they're super handy and I find I don't have to change bits very often. Now with these two out of the way, there is one other size router I think a lot of people can probably benefit from adding to their shop. And that's something like this guy. Now this guy is obviously a little bit bigger than these other routers. This is the PM6200 from Bora, and this is in a class of routers that I put in the three horsepower plus range. Uh, most of these are gonna be three and a quarter like the Bora, uh, maybe some are up in the three and a half range. Now, obviously these are a much bigger router. When we compare it to kind of the standard size router, you can see the motor body on here is significantly larger diameter, um, and that leads to a much higher torque and higher power router. Now these guys are really designed for when you need the ultimate in power and torque. Generally, this means you're using a large bit, such as a raised panel bit, and they work extremely well like that. However, with these larger routers, there are a couple of things that you are gonna give up. One, this is a heavy router. There's a lot of power here, but this isn't a router that I'm gonna to wanna to balance on the edge of a workpiece necessarily. This works really well on something like routing a profile on a large table where you have a large bearing surface and I'm not holding the weight on it. This also works really well in an instance uh, where it's trapped in a jig, something like flattening a slab of wood uh, on a slab flattening jig. This works extremely well. However, most of these are going to have a fixed base, like this Bora. So when we pull this motor out of here, we'll get a good look at the motor itself. So with this router motor out of the base, we can see the body of the motor, like I mentioned earlier, is significantly larger uh, than either of these other routers. And that leads really well to that increased torque. Now, when we start looking at a router in this size, I really start thinking router table motor. Um, and that's where I really like to use these guys. This larger three and a quarter horse motor, uh, especially like this one from Bora, work really well in a router table setup. This larger tube can be gripped in a router lift. Uh, and then this really starts to approach that shaper territory turns your router table more into a high horse shaper type table. And I really like that. Now, let's talk about the power of these guys for a minute. You may think that because you can spin a bigger bit with this, that's where most of that power is needed. And that's not necessarily the case. Even spinning a smaller diameter bit, let's say a half inch straight bit, for example, as soon as that bit's up to speed, let's say 18,000 RPM, 
and you start to engage a cut, that router bit's gonna slow down a little bit. Well, the larger diameter motor and the larger power motor can help keep that speed up, and that's gonna lead to a cleaner cut. There's a couple of key features to look at when you're looking at a larger motor like this. The first is going to be some speed control. Now, not all of these router motors are gonna have speed controls like this PM6200 do, um, but that's extremely beneficial when you start looking at the larger diameter bits, such as a raised panel bit. With the larger diameter, we're mainly concerned at that point about the peripheral speed of the cutter. Because it's a larger diameter bit, the outside of the bit's gonna be spinning much faster than the center, which is where the RPMs are measured. So if something's spinning at, let's call it 10,000 RPM in the center, that tip may be spinning closer to 24,000 RPM. And that's just a little bit too fast. So we wanna be able to turn that down and we can do that here on this Bora. The other thing that we wanna look at is its startup. What I mean by that is uh, if you've ever used an older router, a lot of times when you turn it on, it will just snap on and you get kind of a jerky motion as you're holding it. While that's not that big a deal once it's mounted in a router table, if you're hand holding a router this large, that can be a real jerk uh, and potentially be unsafe. Uh, most of the newer motors, like this Bora, are gonna be soft start. What I mean by that is when you turn it on, it's gonna take a second to turn on and it will slowly rev up. That way you don't get that kind of jerky motion as you start it. Another thing to look at is the collet style. And what I mean by that is, Many manufacturers have went to this ER20 style collet. This is a machining collet. And you can see it has many more curves in it than a standard collet does. What this means is that as you tighten it down, you actually get a much more even grab on the shank of your bit. And it makes it uh, much more secure, especially when you're spinning one of those really large bits. Another thing I like about this is a lot of the times you can buy replacement uh, sleeves for inside there. So if you're using an odd size shanked collet, like a, a 10 millimeter or an 11 millimeter collet or router bit, you can buy a collet to match. And they're only a couple bucks because machinists use these all the time, so they're readily available. So just to kind of go over it again, you know, a three and a quarter horse motor uh, works well in your hand if you're doing smart cuts where you have a good stable base for the router. Uh, this isn't going to be a guy that I'd use on the edge of a workpiece, or it works really well in the router table. There's another place that these work extremely well, and that's in a CNC gantry. Most of the larger CNC manufacturers will make gantries that will hold these larger uh, diameter router motors. And that's beneficial if you're doing something with heavy cuts, such as running a large spoil board bit to resurface your CNC bed, or even if you're using a smaller diameter bit and you wanna keep the speed up as your cutting material. These work extremely well. So if you do run a CNC, uh, take a look at upgrading to a larger horse motor and you might find some benefits to it. So a larger motor isn't necessarily something that you might use in every single project in your shop. But if you do get in one of those projects that requires you to use a larger diameter bit or you need to take a bigger cut for whatever reason, take a look at adding a larger diameter motor to your shop. I think you'll find that the three and a quarter horse motor really has power that's gonna help benefit you in your projects.